bad dude. For years I've been talking about getting a big property and opening up an animal sanctuary with my fiance Lux. And gosh dang darn it, we did it. We have over 40 acres in Tennessee and I love it so much, I've become a full on country boy. Driving tractors. Like I'm so badass on that thing I'm doing wheelies these days. Masterfully mowing the grass. I became a lumberjack too. I spent all my time just chopping wood. I mean, I really chop a lot of wood. And I split the wood, and I store the wood. And oh boy, do I burn the wood. I just sit there staring at the fire. I call it caveman television. We wasted no time getting animals. We already have two pigs, Fonzarelli and Lulu. Come on, good girl! And a ranch cat named Rocky, who follows me around the one mile long trail that goes around the property. Epic. Ladies and gentlemen, our first new barn. We're actually doing it. I was just out there by myself for a while, but then my buddies showed up and we started getting rad. One of the first things we did was buy a couple bows and arrows so we could find out who's the best archer. And I do believe that would be me. Get this fucking on my back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he split it in twain. <laughs> <laughs> then we installed a basketball hoop to find out who's the king of one-on-one, -on -one, which turned out to be Scott Randolph. Ah. Oh. Oh. He celebrated with a victory lap in the new UTV we got. Yeah, dude, that thing's fun, man. And of course, after all of that activity, we wanted to relax in the new hot tub that we got. So we inflated this outrageous 30-foot screen, and we loaded up one of Johnny Knoxville's best movies. I really think it was his bravest role and his most touching performance. We watched The Ringer, and it has stood the test of time. No, a Jeffy Manley challenge, remember? Uh, <laughs> and if you've never been in a hot tub, let me tell you about Celtic hot tubs. I paid them a visit. The scale of the operation that they run in that factory blew me away. And that is how a hot tub gets made. <laughs> I love my Celtic hot tub, maybe even more than the ringer. What I didn't love, when the truck got stuck in the grass... Fuck! Being the country boy that I am, I figured I'll just put the UTV in four-wheel drive and push it out while Scott gently rides out. But Scott was not gentle. I'm screaming, stop! Scott, stop! And all he hears is, yeah! <laughs> oh my god. He destroyed our lawn. The whole UTV, plus me and Vinny, covered in mud. Had all of that not been captured on video, I would have been super pissed. Yeah, I'm sorry, and you're welcome. I have any more on my face? No, dude. No? The next morning, we loaded up on the tour bus and headed to Atlanta, Georgia, with me cooking breakfast along the way. And that's how the weight's just fallen off of me. <laughs> Maybe you remember my obnoxious tour bus with the Stevo graphics wrapped all over it, which I did all the cool stunts on. Well, we recently took off the wrap, so now we travel with the cloak of anonymity. When we got to Atlanta, we linked up with the rapper Russ to record an epic podcast. And I mean epic. It drops today. You gotta check it out. Would you ever sell your back catalog? No, I got offered. They offered 50. Yeah. 50 what? Million. Wow! <laughs> After that, it was off to my sister's house in Florida, where her and I filmed the next video for this channel. But then it was back on the road to South Florida, where we linked up with my buddy Kevo, who I dropped out of college with. How long have you known Steve for? 30 years. Really? It's 93, dude. He has 28 cats in his house. So we can only see, see 17 of them, but there's really 28. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
after picking up Kevo, we went deeper into South Florida, where my dad lives. And my dad has recently come out of retirement to act as my business manager. True story. So, of course, since we were recording a podcast with Patrick Bet David that day, we were like, why not make my dad the special guest co-host? And it was insane. So there is hope. Shut up, Dad. There's hope. <laughs> I'm, I'm very hopeful. What a yeah. freaking podcast. Like, they, they ask me, how was that? I'm like, dude, it's exactly what you don't think it's going to be. That podcast drops next week. <laughs> I was not expecting this. I had a freaking blast with you guys. Oh, this is man. sick. But immediately after recording it, we went balls deep into Miami and the heart of UFC 299, where we did podcasts with Cheeto Vera and Sean O'Malley. I was actually part of UFC media for Fight Week, and I interviewed a bunch of fighters on a glamorous and very quiet red carpet. Dude, you're so well set up, dude, with everything, man. I'm not even worried about you, bro. Uh, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. Congrats yeah. on everything, uh, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. You're the man, Steve. But if you think this trip to Florida was only about the UFC and that we weren't going to go to Vanilla Ice's house, you're out of your mind. Plus, we had a real problem with the bus. Our generator had flown out and the track it was on was broken. And who else was going to fix it? Oh my see. God, you really going to film it? Yeah, this is sick. <laughs> I'm trying to snap this bolt off here so you can put your generator in. Oh. <laughs> hey, if there's a problem, yo, I'll solve it. There you go. <laughs> That's right, he solved it. Then he showed us his cars in the garage, his helicopter landing pad. Yeah, All right. let's go. All right, but we had to get back to Miami for the fights, and they were epic too. <laughs> Dustin Poirier knocked that dude out. Everybody went nuts. I'm talking about Mr. Beast, Logan Paul, all these NFL dudes. I mean, I was in one major row. Now, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, thank you for watching the video. And my lady and I are off to get massages. 